Thanks, everyone. Good to see some familiar and new faces. Hey, Richard. Uh, I'm Valentina Raman. I'm one of the co-founders of Youth by Youth. Uh, we're a global learning community for youth education activists and adult allies. And I'm here today with uh, um, I'm in. Oh, sorry, I'm Inez, and I am the co-founder of Crazy Beautiful World, a social enterprise I started with my 16-year-old son to connect the generations to start solving our problems together with wisdom and compassion. And we'll be exploring today with you, teens and elders, intergenerational connection as foundation for learning. So before we jump in. We wanted to invite a minute of silence in honor and in solidarity with our Ukrainian brothers and sisters and, and siblings um, that just to hold space in our hearts for this moment that they're experiencing. When you feel ready, I invite you to take three breaths with me to arrive in this space. So then you can close your eyes, look at your feet, however is comfortable for you. And I invite you to take a breath in with me and release. Again, in, even deeper. Release. One final breath, even deeper. And breathe out with a sound. Whew. All right. And uh, in, this, in this present moment, uh, I invite you to dedicate this hour to a teenager in your life, in your heart. It can be you, if the teenager still sleeps within you, Joe. Uh, so just take a moment to bring to mind a teenager in your heart in your mind that you dedicate this hour to as we explore intergenerational connection. All right, and feel free to share at any point in the chat. So, thank you, Valentina. Great. 
So yes, we're going to spend an hour exploring intergenerational connection and connecting a bit with the teenager that we once were. Um, and for me, the reason to do this is because one of the things I noticed um, as a mother of a teenager is that teenagers don't have a lot of places where they connect with adults or elders that are not school or their parents. And I think this is a real loss, depending on which part of the world you are. So um, we're just going to explore how, where are the places where this works well? Why, where does it work not so well? And what are the reasons why we don't have so many of those connections um, in certainly in the West anymore? So um, if you have pen and paper, um, we can also do it on your computer. I'd like you just to take a moment to think about the last time you had a really amazing connection with a teenager. What was it about that moment or the circumstances or how you were in that connection that made it a really powerful moment for you when you really felt that something happened? So just take a few minutes just to write some notes down for yourself. This is just an exercise for you to just sit with that moment and to imagine it again and to really bring it back to life and to think, what was it about that that really worked? So I'll just give you some time to do that. And if you're struggling to think of a teenager that you connected with, you can also allow yourself to think of yourself as a teenager and a moment when you really connected with an adult. So don't feel that you have to force it if you, nothing comes to mind, but you were once a teenager and there must have been a moment when you had a great connection with an adult and just describe that for yourself. Just another minute. Think about how you felt, where you were. What are the elements that made that a really amazing connection? Okay, so finishing off whatever you're writing. And now I'd like you to think of the last time you had a connection with a teenager that really didn't work at all. <laughs> you tried to connect, but for some reason you were going in opposite directions, maybe it escalated. Um, and if you can't think of a teenager that you interacted with, remember the teenager that you were and think of a moment when everything went wrong, everything that could go wrong went wrong and you totally disconnected and it was really deeply uncomfortable. What was going on? How were you? How were they? What were all the elements that made that a really, really testing and trying and uncomfortable connection or disconnect? I'll just give you a couple of minutes for that.
And it really is even worth remembering the spaces that you were in. Where were you? What time of day was it? All of those things are parts of that, what helps or hinders our connection to other people. So just a few more seconds. Finishing off any writing you're doing. So now you should have two two episodes, two stories. And um, Valentina, should we, should we go into breakout rooms? So we can have three groups of three. Um, Great, yeah. Yeah. So um, I've made the, the groups. Inez, don't join you. Um, <laughs> uh, so share with, have, make sure each person will have eight minutes. Um, yeah. Okay. So just a few person. minutes each. Um, just sharing, obviously, what you've just, you know, some of your stories and what you've noticed about those two differences. So, do you want to send us off? Yeah. We're actually in Paris, so we can give about five minutes. Oh. It looks like Gabriella's alone. Is Mona? Mona, will you be joining the breakout room? Oh, there she goes. Oh, I just also moved Ines. Ines is in there. Uh, let me see where we are. Okay. If you want to pop in one, I'm happy to hold down the fort. Okay, I think I'll join then one of the rooms. All right, I'll see you on the other side. Cool, and there's seven minutes. Um, are they being manually timed or did you have like the Zoom timer thing going oh, on? Oh, I'm manually timing till 8.25, but okay. I might just close it out if I sense that we're on the other side. And you're welcome to join one too. Uh, oh no, I'm kind of like half here, okay. half like emailing. I know how you're feeling. <laughs> um, so cool. And do you want me to keep an eye on the time or it seems like you've got that kind of? I'm happy to keep an eye on it. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I'll be oh, here. Maybe I should pause the recording. Oh, I. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome. Uh, hopefully didn't cut off too many in mid-sentence. <laughs> Always too short, these breakouts. Yeah. Welcome, Devika, Lucien, Anna. Um, well, we, so to bring us back, um, hopefully that started to surface for you, maybe some commonalities in both the positive and in the negative. And so we'd love to reflect collectively now on what are those common principles that you're starting to notice between our stories? What, uh, what are the principles that make an intergenerational connection empowering? And what is it that makes, what does it not look like? What makes the disconnect? What creates that uncomfortability? And I have- oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, shall we, shall we ask some, because uh, there are some people I think it came a little bit later. Would it be good just to hear from the breakout rooms, um, some of the impressions before we move on? Sure. Yeah. Yeah? Does yeah. anyone want to share the, 
some of the what they picked up from the conversation. So you can just unmute yourself. I, I didn't contribute my oh. thoughts or feelings to my group, but what I picked up from my group was was feelings. Just uh, getting right to the core of it and connecting at that that level where you're just two people individually trying to understand each other and and um, some people have trauma that they uh, they really don't know what they're dealing with and it's hard to dance through that at times so richard you said you didn't contribute was that because the session cut you off before you got a chance to speak no i uh, i have a habit habit of uh, not being on task and I spent all my time just finding out about other people. <laughs> school school okay. was a problem for me. I, my mind was always somewhere else. And so I, I don't keep to the agenda. It's perfectly fine. It's all welcome here. Thank you. Did anyone else have anything that they noticed or wanted to share that came up when they were having that conversation? Michael, yeah. Um, one commonality that I noticed as soon as you said commonalities was that um, two of us had uh, conflict between the team and ourselves when either one of us or both of us didn't want to be in the situation that we were in. So it was like not consensual, I guess, like on both parties. That's one thing. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, we're going to pull those all together, aren't we now, Valentina? Yes. So I'm going to just share my screen here. Um, just a show of hands, how many people have used a Jamboard before? Okay, a few. So I'm going to put the link in the chat. But I'd like us to start to surface from those reflections, what are those principles? What does empowering intergenerational connection look slash feel like? So take a moment to add the, uh, with the link in the chat, you can access this. I think you should all, oops. Anyone with the link can edit. So now with that link, if you refresh the page, you should see the sticky note icon here on the left. And you can just add your thoughts uh, as looks like trust. And so add that, what principles came up for you. We'll give a couple minutes for you to add your thoughts to this Jamboard. What does empowering intergenerational connection look or feel like, taste like, smell like. Mm. No time pressure in space. Hmm. Relationships need to be consensual. No teaching objective. Hmm. And one project. Nice. Yeah, these are beautiful principles. Mutual respect, curiosity, hands-on project, speech spaces. So whoever contributed that, I'd love to hear what was, uh, what you would define as speech spaces. Okay, Valentina, it's me. Uh, 
spaces to to the to the youth uh, talk what they want to talk and, and i think that uh this could this could be is it, you have to open these spaces in the agenda okay i will listen to you and it's more important uh speak is space to speech that space to understanding you know what i mean yeah yeah those safe and brave spaces to speak their voice. Um, yeah, I completely agree. Uh, I would love to capture also the flip side. What does intergenerational disconnection come from, look like, feel like? What came up from your stories of the negative? Um, what were the roots? of that disconnect, that uncomfortability. Mm, I know more than you, the need to be right, have the right answer. Afraid to be vulnerable. Mm. And that goes in both directions. Fear of the other, ego, shame, judgment. Mm. Trauma. Beautiful. So take a moment to look at these two slides. The sense of belonging, bounding up our liberation with one another, equity, curiosity, and the flip side, what disconnects us what connects us and connects us. Just read on your own what everyone has contributed. Feel free to continue adding thoughts. And I'd like you to reflect for yourself, what gets in the way of you practicing, our practicing of these principles for intergenerational connection? What gets in the way for you? Feel free to share verbally or in the chat. Any thoughts on mm, fear, stress, time pressures? Yeah, when we're not present. I think presence was something, Joe, that you mentioned in our group. I think that's definitely a principle. When we have our minds on everything else. We can see it, we can feel it. What else? Welcome, Ermin. Good to see you. I'd like you to remember again, the teenager that you dedicated this hour to. Just bring them back to your heart and mind. That teenager that you are striving to connect with or have connected with, or maybe disconnected with. What are three spaces, three spaces where you interact with that teen 
where you can practice these principles. Like Ines said, imagine the space, imagine the place where you are, what time of day, what are three places you can bring these shared principles that I'll put on the screen again. Yeah, and maybe you can even frame it as the next time I am connecting with the person, this is how I would like to be. And bearing in mind that that means that you need to also take care of yourself, that it's not about, you know, forcing yourself because, you know, when we need enough space to hold and how can we create that in ourselves? How can we create that space in ourselves, the comfort, the safety that we need to be able to hold the other. But just imagine like the next time I am interacting with, the next time I connect with, this is what I'd like to bring. Share with us want, in the chat. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can share it in the chat or you can, if you wanna just make a pledge to yourself, maybe write those three moments down. anyone would like to share their intention the next time how would you apply one of these principles just one voice in the room before we move into some tools and resources that we'd like to offer I think on a personal note, I will meet outdoors where there is space, not in a tiny office without windows. I think that's a very trapped feeling. I'm happy to go. I think the next time I, I'm a teen and I have several in my life because I'm an auntie to so many teenagers. Um, <laughs> Next time I'm with a teen, I will leave space for silence. Um, I get very nervous and I talk a lot because I think my nieces and nephews and my mentees will think that I'm this old fart. Um, so I just and I think it's really important to leave space for silence and, and let silence move from being awkward to being comfortable. Mm. Thanks for sharing that. I see in the chat from Mona. Remember to be mindful and practice empathy. Mm, for sure. Presence and perspective taking. Yes, go for it, Gabriela. I'm, a, uh, I'm with a team. I will, before doing the same that Iman, Iman said, uh, I will ask uh, them how they came in this space. We call this check-in because I think before uh, we equality, you need to give a space for diversity. And okay, how you came here and bring what you have to bring. It's, not, it's okay not to be okay. And then mm. let silence and, and bring all together. I love that. Yes, go ahead, Pia. Yeah, I wanted to add to that. I had a similar thought. I want to 
remember that whatever I thought was going to happen in this time we spent together is not as important as meeting the person where they are at that moment. Um, yeah, that's it. Definitely resonate with that. I, I, want, I want to add one, which is um, the next time I meet a teen that's not my son, because I know my son, but a teen I don't know, is to um, allow myself to really see them as a vulnerable person that they are. Teenage is a very vulnerable time, but it gets presented as a very, like, I know everything. And... Uh, yeah, to sort of smile at the at the strangers, the strange teenagers who don't smile back at you in the street. They think you're crazy. So I'm going to keep <laughs> smiling at them. <laughs> smiling is so last generation. <laughs> um. Any other reflections? Inez reminds me of a little story of, of this uh, paper boy in a community delivering his papers and he'd roll them up and throw them on the porch. And, and uh, he was a, a nasty little boy. Uh, nobody in the neighborhood liked him, but this one person would always thank him for the paper and, and uh, treat him nicely. And, and a neighbor said to, to him, why do you treat him so nicely? He's, he's so nasty to you. And he responded, I'm not going to let him change my behavior. And uh, that's a stance that I've, I've thought when I'm dealing with anybody, that if I'm not, not getting somewhere or feel that it's bad, I've, I've got to just kind of suck it up, <laughs> do better. Yeah, that's a great story. Thank you, Richard. Right. So anyone else? Yeah, I think I'd like to share. I, I don't have three. I think I just have, um, yes. So listen, I think that's been said, like just creating a lot of space for listening to whatever might come up. And also kind of playing and playing silly and just kind of reminding them that, that there's no serious adult expectation that they have to live up to, you know, I think. I would have liked more of that when I was a teenager. Yeah. I've heard it. Thanks. Yeah. I don't want to take up a lot of time here, but I'd like to come back for a moment, if I may, uh, to something Michael said about uh, relationships needing to be consensual. And, uh, and then, Valentina, you, you mentioned having to deal with that student that uh, was a difficult student and you were expected to get somewhere with him and I've been in that situation where I'm kind of assigned to somebody who is not interested in being assigned to me and uh, that's that's just not a it's not a starter uh, you need lots of time in that situation just being in the same vicinity so they can learn to trust you and and uh, there's no way of rushing it sure Beautiful. Yeah, that's not consensual. That's forced. <laughs> um, well, perhaps Ines, would you like to share a few, just some ways to continue practicing all these intentions? Um, um, we, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'll, I'll I'll just tell you a little bit about the work I've been doing because uh, a couple of years ago, my son said to me. I don't want to become an adult because adults have ruined the world and I don't want to be like them. And uh, this was really remarkable given how he'd been surrounded by amazing adults. But of course, he was talking about the big political world he was suddenly realizing existed. He was 14 then. And that's how I came to start Crazy Beautiful World. I said, you need to connect with the adults who have your back. So um, that's what we've been trying to do. We've been connecting teenagers with adults um, in what we call compassionate co-inquiry. And that's a methodology that brings play and improvisation and neuroscience together 
so that both parties understand what's actually going on in our minds and in our bodies um, when we connect and disconnect and that we have this superpower called co-regulation and that when we come into a really quiet, still, calm place in ourselves, we do the same for the other person. We also know how to dysregulate and we practice dysregulation probably a little bit more than we practice co-regulation. So one of the things I, I've learned as a mother, and I've heard this also reflected in some of the things said here, is that time, how important time is in all of this, and patience, and how little of that there sometimes can be. There's a sense that everything has to happen quickly. And that my sense is that young people, they are operating also on their own time frame. And when their brains get um, dysregulated, like when you have a small two or three year olds, they need to come back to themselves. And sometimes that just takes time and sometimes they're kind of quite rude and horrible for a while. And then after a while, they come back and nothing much needs to be said. And I think the ego, I saw someone put ego in there as an, as an inhibitor. My ego says, my child shouldn't be rude to me. <laughs> And that's a big, big problem because he is going to be rude to me. And I make that a big deal. And before you know it, it's a big explosion. But sometimes I just go, okay, I'm just going to leave this for a while. So in the workshop, we learn some of those things. And we start to see the challenges of the, 20, of the 21st century less as things that we are in opposition about and more like objects of curiosity. So there's this thing that's happened. What is what is it if we put it just a little bit away from ourselves rather than in between us? So, yeah, that's some of the work I've been doing. And um, it's amazing to get young people and adults in the room who are not related in amazing conversations and um, how much young people really want to be heard by their elders. They really need us to show up, really, really, really need us to show up. and. I have to send them home because they don't want to go home. They want to keep having these conversations with people um, and with adults and feeling that there are that they're not alone with all of the challenges they're facing. So, so yeah, that's that's a bit about me, Valentina. I'll put I'll put it in the um in the uh, chat, the website. Yes, and um, yeah, we do some similar deep dialogue work with Youth by Youth. So Youth by Youth is a global learning community that is intergenerational for youth education activists and adult allies who are dedicated to the reimagination and transformation of education. Uh, and we have well, one of our uh, core programs, our, our first full length program is our Global Action Circles program, which actually Richard uh, here was a part of, uh, part of my Global Action Circle. And uh, what that looks like is uh, uh, young people and uh, adults learning, co-learning side by side, each coming with their individual learning question, but through the process, um, also cross-pollinating ideas around a common theme in education and uh, sharing resources. And, and uh, that kicks off in August. So if that's of interest to you, if there's a learning question that is that you would like to explore and explore with uh, young people from around the world, this is a, a great process to dive deeper into that. And we go through what is, what if, what now is our three phase curriculum. So really getting to this from the sense making together to the collective uh, uh, reimagination, radical reimagination to collective action. and. Something that um, is just launching uh, the, in the next week is our allyship program. So this is what's emerged from our global action circles is that young people who have projects who want to have continued allyship and support because we realize there is a unique role as much as the learning process is horizontal. There is a unique role that happens when an elder can offer experience and expertise. And when, I, when that same uh, adult ally can also receive 
the was the input and the wisdom and perspective of a young person for education initiatives. It's that's essential. So we say allyship, not mentorship. And if that's of interest to you, uh, I'll put the, the link to our website and also um, uh, my email in the chat as the applications are technically closed, but that's another opportunity to practice um, this intergenerational dialogue. So um, just uh, a couple of offerings there. Yeah. Shall I, shall I share the, um, the uh, posts from the young people, Valentina? Great. So um, uh, part of what I decided to do when we started this project, Crazy Beautiful World, was to try and listen to young people and to hear um, what they were thinking about the world. And I did a, a short survey which had four questions. One was, what do you wish adults understood about young people and what it's like to grow up in the 21st century? Um, what do you think is crazy about the world? What do you think is beautiful? And if there's one thing you could change? And so um, I gathered those together and on the, I'll just show you on the, can I screen share? Um, yeah. Okay, let me just. You should be able to. Okay, let me just pull it up. So there's a page on the website called Youth Voices and I'll just share it with you. Is that, can you see that now? Yes, Great. we can. Okay, so these are some of the things that young people say to us. That's just a, a snippet of those. And I get those and I read through them. They're longer than this. And I'm always so touched by the depth of understanding that young people have about what's going on. Um, and the values of um, care and generosity and peace that come across. So these are just snippets of from different parts of the world, from different people, mostly in the UK, but also other parts of the world. Um, and so as our final uh, exercise, I, we would like to ask you to, you know, you can go to that page or you can just think after everything we've sort of spoken about in this session, what would you like to say to young people growing up right now from where you are standing? Um, and yeah, you want to add anything to that, Valentina? Is that sort of... So we, you can put that in the yeah you can yeah. put that in the chat and if you put your your name and the country you're from and your age just like they are over here then we would like Valentina like would like to share some of your comments because um, even though you're not in the room with, with the young people that are that have said those things it's nice just to try and have some of that dialogue happening some responses from from the elders to what they're thinking so just a few more so you can also go to the page if you want to look there so yes in the final few minutes just yeah what would you like to say to some of the young people who've voiced their um thoughts on these pages can i post the question in the chat as well yeah thank you Feel free to share verbally if you'd like. Yes, yeah, if you'd want to just tell us. I feel like, I think this philosopher, Elaine de Bouton, said this one time um, when he was like coaching people in relationships, but he just always, uh, he said we should always try to view our partner as a child and i would maybe just tell the youth like we're still children like adults are still children <laughs> um, like we're children that have more experiences um and uh you know that 
hopefully we learn from. <laughs> um, but like at the end of the day, like we still have all of our childishness and teenageness like inside of us still. So true. That's very that's a very powerful thing to say. Oh, it's one of the things that young people really, really love when when adults admit that they were once young. <laughs> And still, <laughs> and still a child, <laughs> still a tender, vulnerable soul. If if I can add something in here, I uh, I've been a teacher for for decades, and uh, I had a chance to work in a a classroom where it took students off the schedule. The um, there's a a saying by Larry uh, Rosenstock who started a, a network of of private schools, that the, the single greatest impediment to educational innovation is the formally scheduled school day, where we age segregate the kids and we, we segregate the subjects and everything is so tightly defined. And this program I ran just got rid of the schedule. I had uh, 25 grade 10 to 12 students working as a community of learners. And what I noticed there is um, that the students aren't all that interested in the elders as such. They're most interested in the, the people who are just a little older than themselves. That's, that's where they really connect and where they, they really learn. And uh, as adults, we, we feel this need to connect with, with young people. We, got to get over ourselves uh, we don't need for them to like us uh, just just be with them and and let them pick from you what what they feel they need when they need it and so you're there as a, a trusting loving person but you're not imposing yourself you you have a relationship where you're coming uh, where they're coming to you and what I see is a lot of adults trying to go to them trying to to impose upon them so that they get some positive vibes from, from young people. And uh, we just gotta be comfortable with ourselves and, and not be looking for that from the, the young people. Yeah, thank you, Richard, thank you. Yes, I recognize that very much. Yeah. There's some shares in the, in the chat as well. Thank you. I'm just going to put um, a few links in the... Um, so that's uh, the links from the allyship video. Do you have the link there or did I... I just put it in. Oh, okay, there. sorry. But there's also, if you, um, there's two surveys, so there's an elder survey and a teen survey, which is a little bit longer than the exercise we just did now. If you want to share with your team, or if you want to fill it in yourself, it'd be really great to start this conversation. Um, Valentina, is there anything else we need to add? Um, no, just feel free to reach out, continue the conversation. Um, and if there's other, ways you see uh, to deepen intergenerational connection and dialogue with crazy beautiful world youth by youth there beyond just feel free to reach out uh, let's continue the continue the the interbeing um, and just simply listening to young people and their voices so thank you for holding this space and being curious about this uh this topic it's um inspiring especially after a long week so thank you for for being here valentina shall we shall we finish just with each of us just one word yeah before we go so if we just each say a word and then pass it on to another person that makes it like a circle that's all right so my word is gratitude and i'm passing it on to joe My word is wonder, W-O-N-D-E-R, and I'll pass it on to uh, Ehrman. 
Thanks, Joe. My word is together. Can you pass it on, Emma? And I'll pass it on to Let me see, let me see. I don't have, I don't, let me just go to gallery view so I can pick somebody. Who was that, Ermin? Gabriella Montenegro. Gabriella. Thank you. My, my word is marvelous. I don't know if I speak uh, correct. <laughs> marvelous. <you>. Marvelous, yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Maravillada. <laughs> Thank you. You pass it on, Gabriella? Hey, for sure. I, I pass on from Mona. Okay, so my phrase is uh, gratitude for this connection. Hmm. Can you pass it on, Mona? Pardon? Can you pass pass it on? Who's oh, the next pass person? it on to Anna. Anna, A N A. Are you there, Anna? Maybe she's gone off. Shall we try? Maybe, maybe I pass it on to Mona Dugal. Is Mona Dugal there? Third time's the charm. <laughs> Let's try someone else. Okay, would you want to try or should I? Uh, so and, we go to uh, is Richard spoken? I don't know. Uh, no. Distracted. Okay. Uh, thanks, Mona. Let's hear from you. Um, yeah. Back to where we started, Ukraine. Hmm. Yes. Perhaps Pia and then Marcel. Oh, yeah, Pia, sorry. Marcel? Oh, uh, yeah, maybe something like hope, but something cooler. But yeah, in that direction. Yeah, thank mm. you. Dan? Peace. Peace is my word. Mm. Ah. Transition will be my word. Mm. Hopefully a positive one. Um, well, Dan, I know you want to transition us yeah. to <laughs> the next session. Um, so thank you all and I'll let, let you close out. Beautiful. Thank you, everyone.